I'm Damon Zell, and this is your Eve Echoes Weekly News Update, where we take a deep dive into all the happenings of the week. But first, if you can tag that subscribe button, ring that bell, share and like the video, you can stay up to date with everything that this channel has to offer. Now, there is only one correction since the last video, and that was of uh, the Corporation Wolf, where I showed a uh, kill mail of a Macario, uh, but I claimed it Wolf, and it was really Mug, and there was this controversy that is Wolf part of Six Seal Alliance. They are not. It was just, there were so many Macario kills in the last episode that particular kill got lost in the shuffle, and I, I can't really find it where I downloaded it before. So, if it's playing, if the kill mail's in the background, then good. If not, know that I do apologize to Wolf. Uh, they are separate, and they did get a Macario kill themselves that landed them on the big kills uh, list. Now, as an update to why I have not put out a video in the last, I think it's 15 days now. Um, and that is because our little pilot here has gotten really sick. And he started off with the upper respiratory infection, and that went away and then came back. And then it also turned into the Coxsackie's virus, which is little blisters on the back of his throat, making him cough more and more. Uh, I'm not really thrilled with the pediatrician that we have right now, our other pediatrician close to practice. Um, and th this pediatrician is basically just, oh, just manage his symptoms, he's fine, he's fine. Yeah, I've been a parent. I know exactly what's going on with my kid. <laughs> with, with the difference between viral and, and bacterial. And the way that this office seems to operate is they want you to manage their symptoms until they get really, really sick. And they got to come back and then they prescribe something for them. Anyway, the Coxsackie's then turned into a thing with his lungs. Where he needed breathing treatments every four hours and uh two rounds of steroids once in the morning once in the evening and that was for about a week and a half he's off his last breathing treatment he's doing much better he's clear he's a happy baby again so i actually can now put out you know videos again um but, you know he does come first before this content creation and my time is stretched unfortunately uh as it is right now so notice going forward we're going to try and uh, get those videos out on time. And if that wasn't enough, my five-year-old at school last week had a little accident on the playground where she was going up the slide, uh, the stairs, slipped, fell, and broke her nose. Since then, the swelling has gone down, the bruising has faded, and it's not as bad as, say, Owen Wilson but we are going to have to make an appointment for a uh, pediatrician uh, ENT because it is going to have to get corrected and hopefully she won't need surgery for it. But, you know, she's been a trooper through the whole thing. The next day, she was ready to go back to school. She was upset that she had to leave school early that day because of the broken nose. But, uh, yeah, she was only in pain uh, the night of. And uh, since then, she's, she's basically a trooper. So, uh, yeah, so that was uh, the last two weeks in a nutshell on a personal level. All right, so let's take a look at our patch notes for November 17th. Now, I know in the last two weeks there was the massive November update with capitals, with Sinos, with a whole slew of things that I didn't cover, but that's okay. Many of the other content creators did cover the patch notes. We know what's in them. We covered them before they came out. We knew what was coming. So we're just, just going to move forward to this week's. Because there was not really any patchwork uh, patch notes last week. And this one does have some significant changes. Now, the first thing they cover is the Interstellar Bazaar, the Neon Rain. Well, I'm not really going to dive too much into it in this video. I am going to be putting out a specific video just on the Neo Rain event uh, for the 23rd, uh, NetEase is going to push it out because they want uh, a lot of us content creators to uh, push out some of these videos early and then they, they're going to blast it on their stuff. But we're going to take an honest look at what that event is. The good, the bad, the pros, the cons. 
we're gonna we're gonna rip through it and I'm also having a poll currently on my channel right now to see what the community thinks of it and right now uh, today's the first day live but just reading everything the community is not really digging it so far uh, because of the gotcha element because of the RNG about it and because of the pay to win scenario like I said we're gonna cover that in a future video so be sure to look out uh, for that video now the actual uh, optimizations that they did for this patch is first we all know they update the up ah they <laughs> updated the estimated prices based on the successful transactions within the market um, that's a given but it's always number one they improved the creation and acceptance process of contracts so the contract should be a little bit smoother now they enabled the uh, showdown mode on a dreadnought uh, immediately removes its undock protection so that's good to know if you undock in a dread you hit your siege model you automatically lose that 60 seconds of invulnerability uh, number four they updated the design for the back button on the bottom left of the ship tree screen that's important uh, five unprocessed request pending approval by the corporation will now be displayed on top so that's just a little you know quality of life thing uh number six a new login screen has been added for the upcoming interstellar bazaar so you've seen it it's this purple funky thing you know it's what happens when you know, a rave comes into space i guess now they did fix one bug and always there are bugs whenever they release anything but the bug they fixed this week is they fixed an issue where the npc carriers in the capital ship rally points do not have fighter related modules fitted to them so that means when you do these rally points now hopefully some of the fighter related modules such as the uh, fighter warp speed module or the fighter damage modules will now drop when you kill these carriers however they do state that there were other two other bug fixes uh, that were missed in the original announcement and <clears throat> Well, the one was the one they said was the rally points do not have fighter related modules. They fixed that. So they really meant there was one that wasn't on the published. And that is they fixed an issue with the interior scene of the corporation outpost uh, that is not corrected. This is a temporary supplement. Please refer to the latest official announcement in the game and the latest patch notes posted by Joseph. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you because I have yet to own... Uh, my own outpost or if they're referring to Citadels at this point. I have no idea what that second fix is I'm gonna be completely honest with you um, If you want to lay it out in layman's terms for me down in the comments more power to you Also because we are gonna be covering that um, video the neon rain event in a future video, please in the comments give me your unfiltered um response to what you think this event is like how do you feel about it do you think it's an rng do you think it's a cash grab um what do you feel honestly about uh this new event that they're pushing out those of you hoping for a game balance in the near future unfortunately will be disappointed as earlier in, around september we were told by melos in game design that because the capitals that they were focusing on that they were going to push back the balance update till around january 2022 now remember they said they were going to do two balance updates every year once in the spring once in the fall and we are definitely due for that balance update seeing as interceptors are still too op currently as well as other bugs and mechanics not working in the game and other ships needing an overhaul however just the other day we did get a message from Lance Dot in game design saying that before the game was launched, uh, they planned on two balancing updates each year, like I said, once in April, once in October. But due to the tight developmental pace of the balancing update in uh, April this year, not every goal was satisfied. Uh, because it was a capital update sprint to October, the manpower was very tight, so we close, uh, we chose to skip this balance update this time. So the next balance adjustment should be in April next year. Now this is not very received well by the community. Everyone is actually very upset about this. You shouldn't have to go a year to fix broken things in the game. And 
than fix broken ships. I mean, even if they were to do, you know, small balances, say every two months, I think that would go over well with the community. Because currently right now, with the balance date now pushed back another six months, the lack of a roadmap uh, showing what content is coming in the near future, and the current uh, events and capitals, it seems like kind of like a, a, a lot of are claiming as a cash grab. A lot of people are losing faith in Eve Echoes currently, and we are losing player base due to these pushbacks, non-changes, bugs not being fixed, and again, cash grabs. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I've always said I'm always going to shoot from the, the hip and tell you exactly what's going on. Now, this is basically the same with us. We, as content creators, haven't really don't have that full access to the devs and we don't even know what's going on now I do remember the devs before I don't have the screenshots of it saying that within the next year they are going to be bringing in that Jean Yung faction and most likely it's, they're gonna open up the drone lands and put them in there so that would be content I'm told that we should be getting Titans and super caps probably by August of next year again I don't know why we need them but uh, as far as, as full immersive or immersive content coming, I have no news for you at this time. For your Plex market report, because of this new event, we've seen Plex prices soar. Uh, they've gone from your 1.1, 1.2, all the way up to 1.4 and steadily rising to 1.5 million per Plex. Now, as this event keeps going and is a Plex-fueled event, uh, I am estimating that we are going to see this complete spike in Plex until the event is over. Uh, and then maybe we'll see a Plex coming back down. But right now, the market is upside down. And uh, just be, you know, if you do see someone with Plex for real cheap, snatch it up fast because uh, it's only going to go up. To start off this week's community news, we're going to do a war report. We're going to look at the uh, events that happened recently, leading back to exactly what happened over the last two weeks, which really wasn't much. Uh, because of the big patch notes, there was a uh, sort of a stall in the warfare that was currently uh, heavily pronounced before Pantheon fell. Now, the most recent structure warfare that happened was in the system of T-Tag ZWAI in the Vale of Silence. This is a silent alliance-held region by the uh, corporation Omni, O-M-N-I. Genesis fleets showed up to the whole timer. Uh, the system itself spiked to around 70. There was about 13 uh, silent alliance in the system. Now, those 13 did bravely defend the Citadel, which would ultimately fall to the uh, battlecruiser heavy uh, fleet that laid its assault. The Citadel itself was worth $14.3 billion, and it did fall to the fleet of Genesis Federation. Now, before the Citadel fell, and because of the huge patch that dropped, everyone's basically been busy building capital ships, uh, building back their wallets, so structure warfare was kind of stalling. Uh, of course, there was roaming gangs on both sides. Uh, no and Silent were coming into Esoteria, Period Basin, um, and other Genesis-held regions, setting timers, uh, shield, armor, um, as well as Genesis doing the same in the north, setting timers uh, on no citadels within Vale, as well as Silent throughout Branch and Declan. I mean, no big fights really to write home about until the fall of this citadel. Several were defended on either side. Uh, they would take a armor timer uh, and then Silent would show up in force so then Genesis would not engage and that citadel would be saved. Now the same would, could be said on the Genesis side as well where some timers were also saved due to uh, CTA fleets. But in the grand scheme of things, if you look at it from a structure point of view, most warfare has been stalled. Uh, not really a lot of huge battles over these timers. 
Now, the largest battle to have occurred since the fall of Pantheon was the other day in LWX TAC 93, that's in Delve, and this was the Genesis Federation squaring off against both No and Silent Alliance. This was on the 15th of November. Now, as far as uh, ship types, there was in local around 300 at the height of the battle. We are looking on the Genesis side of 44 battleships, 64 battle cruisers, 9 cruisers, and 20 frigates. And on the no silent side, we had 56 battleships, 44 battle cruisers, 20 cruisers, and 27 frigates. Now, I personally was not there. However, if you go over to Phoenix Tassador's YouTube channel, he does have a video of the height of the fight. Because I am told that the fighting between both sides was around two hours. Now, this was also due to timers being set uh, by no to Genesis and those timers being defended. And the after those timers basically expired and they were repairing, that's when this big fight happened. Now, again, I was not there, so watching the fight itself, it does appear near the end of the fight that uh, Silent Alliance as well as... Um, no, and you have bot you have bots in there, Beasts of the South, Reki. Now, you have to remember that they themselves are part of the Silent Federation. It does look like they got the upper hand and forced the Genesis fleet off grid uh, near the end of that battle. So it looks like so um, No and Silent did did win the grid in this fight in LWX Tech 93. Now the Citadel that was fought over before this big fight was a ally to Genesis TSC. Um, because of the fight, TSC was able to regain control through Antosis and was able to get control of that region again. Now, one thing to note is that when these Citadels have been taken over in the past, they, the aggressor that had the Citadel did break it down from a level two back down to a level one. However, in this instance, when they did break it down, they never collected the materials uh, that were left over after bringing it back down to level one, and they were actually held in the corp delivery within that citadel. So TSC is able to rebuild their station with little to no cost. Now, among some of the other things that did occur over the last two weeks, aside from the fighting, is when um, Catch-22 bowed out, went neutral, uh, appeased all uh, items on the docket for Silent and No to receive that peace. Lo and behold, their Citadel becomes under attack, as well as their defense fleets destroyed by the No Silent fleet. This was in system LS Tech V29 in Quirius. Now, I did reach out to Tahini, uh, Colt, and you know all the leadership uh, of Silent No, and appears this was a actual mistake. They tell me that they had so many timers that day that this one kind of got lost in the shuffle, and it was forgotten, or not so much forgotten, but it got mixed up with the Citadel's two hit, um, as opposed to the ones not to hit, which this was because they were uh, pieced out. Uh, the diplomatics between both sides have come to an arrangement, reparations have been paid, so on and so on. So they did issue an apology for hitting the Citadel uh, even after the peace accord has been struck. Now, also what happened during this week uh, was something of a little bit of, I, I, I don't know how you would call this, but basically what happened was all the alliances within Pantheon broke off. They all became neutral. Pantheon is no more. And peace accords have been uh, reached with most of these alliances. Now, the conditions were set forth for the Happy Bees Alliance, which was the keystone holder of Pantheon and the core of the Pantheon uh, coalition. They were given four terms to set peace. The first was for Happy Bees has to move all of its presence to delve only, retreat any assets with, from within Fountain or any other regions previously held by Pantheon. Two, uh, you will not in any way support or assist Silent Federation war targets. They will give them a list of targets not to assist or be blue with until after the Great War is over. 
Number three, uh, they will need to reset all of their standings for a period of 30 days. And the fourth one, and this is the one that kind of came out of left field, you will hand over ownership of the Pantheon Discord to Silent with no amendments or deletions. Now, I'm all for, you know, in wars, you have concessions and reparations being paid. That's in-game. However, to demand the handing over of someone's property outside of the game seems a little bit much to me. The I don't understand why they would want the Pantheon Discord handed over to them. And my honest opinion, I don't think it should be. The Whoever holds the ownership of that Discord should hold it. It's theirs. They built it. So... Now, we're going to get more into this, but I did reach out to Angel Blackman of Silent, who did broker this deal. Now, I reached out to Angel Blackman saying I was reaching out for the story of the Silent demanding the Pantheon Discord to be held uh, handed over as the new terms for peace. And I was given a very short reply, which was there was an alternative option, which was to shut it down. And that was the terms for Happy Bees only, because, you know, they were the Keystone and uh, Alliance holders, the executors, if you will. Uh, the other terms have been given and accepted by most other ex-Alliance. Now, I did also reach out to another source within Silent Leadership and asked them exactly, you know, what was the, the reason for this. And... They only had an assumption, they, didn't, they weren't really familiar with exactly what was going on. But they said it was assumed that it's to prevent a rebuild of Pantheon. Now, Avenger Red of Happy Bees did answer back with those demands for that um, 1 through 4. And he did reply that, you know, 1 definitely makes sense from a war perspective. And to support that they need blues from people around us. 2. Uh, we are not in any shape. Or to fight silent or support enemies so basically admitting yes we can't we can't get involved in this war we wouldn't survive three he says uh this basically was the whole point of me reaching out to silent leadership which uh, has been completely denied this is counteractive of the we want the player base to retain uh players will either quit or go into genesis i am holding people promising them a new base under the same Happy Bee's name. And number four, he basically basically said that this was not his to give away. This includes every past leader of Pantheon who has had a say in it. This is no longer relevant uh, for you guys after being assured that Pantheon, like Coalition, is never going to be formed in the East. We have declared ourselves defeated in Reddit. We came out to you guys for support, but you guys want to push us even harder. All my requests were genuine. And logical. I am not going to be strong armed in the name of peace terms. We can either have a realistic conversation if you guys want uh, to let a community live or tr thrash them harder while it's on its knees. Now, after that, Michael JD did get involved in the conversation, basically saying, uh, Imagine the hubris that be leaving you have the right to dictate terms as the defeated. A public announcement of a loss in no way means you have exited the war. If you continue to flaunt peace terms, then you also violate the no peace. I'd simmer down on the entitlement and understand that we could care less which entities retain your players. The choice of whether it's yours is in your hand. They're basically saying that points 3 and 4 are mandatory. That they do have to give over the Discord server. Now, I'm going to make these conversation screenshots available. All you have to do is go below in the description, below the video, follow the link, and you can read the conversations for yourself, come to your own conclusion. Now, as of this recording, I have no knowledge whether the Discord server has been turned over or not. I do believe it has not been turned over, uh, as far as I know. Now, in other news within the Silent Federation, the alliance that used to be part of Pantheon that broke away and joined them, Starcats, has had some inner turmoil with the one of the leaders, Sancha, actually exiting the alliance and taking members with him. Now, I did reach out to both parties to find out exactly what happened and what led to this event. Alright, the first side is the current leader of Starcats, Azadis, uh, 
he states he didn't want to adapt to the alliance doctrine among other things the indie teams had no clear direction for building and he saw that as sabotaging of his command decided it was more productive to start yelling at people and attacking people at a personal level blamed his lack of ships and ability on everyone but himself i pulled his permissions to remove him from the equation he left and attempted to pull combat pilots with him or as he would put it left it as an open door invitation uh, didn't like having his perms further reduced but being publicly called out uh, he went from 0 to 100 on a toxic scale in a hurry so I booted him don't need the downward spiral of a former community leader continually advertised for that community to see quite sad to see someone I would have considered a friend turn face like that now, I did also reach out to Sasha for his side of the story, and he tells me <clears throat> that he joined uh, Starcats as a pirate from Dead, moved his way up to Head FC, and then led them for the last year. Uh, he paid out uh, the equivalent of over $400 billion supporting PvP ops, while Indy uh, from Starcats just sat on its ass, in his terms. Um, he says they moved up there, once they broke off of Pantheon, uh, they moved up to the north up in, I believe it's up in Branch, uh, part of the Silent Federation. And Izadis assumes command. He placed Sov in, uh, in a split 10 jump differential without gates out. Uh, he said people started getting turned out. Uh, he tried to re-implement their doctrine that they used for defense back in OKFI uh, with modifications uh, to allow for the new Alliance ship doctrine. Uh, he says he's broke now, he couldn't afford ships, uh, and his team of PvP pilots could not either, and when he went to ask uh, the in industrial side for help, they said they can't do it because the bank was broke. When asking about how the bank, you know, is broke, he said that their indie is a bank program, not a indie program. There's no buyback, no SRP, no PvP team support. They're taking ratting taxes for in-house payouts. Now, he said he tried to stir up uh, controversy in this, trying to find out exactly why the bank is broke, uh, trying to light a fire underneath their ass to produce more ships for PvP. And he said that's when he was shut down. He says his love for Starcats is and always will remain unquestionable. His future goals is to run his own pirate corporation, uh, but he doesn't know what he's going to do exactly. He's talking to a few people, leaving some options open. Uh, I actually think he joined OG. Uh, I could be mistaken, but I, I thought I saw him with an OG tag the other day. He does go on to say that he does think that this will eventually lead to the end of Starcats, that they are unfit to hold uh, any more Sov, and the, PB, the PvP director himself has left. The head FC is actually gone as well. And he says the current FCs that stayed behind are not skilled enough to ward off an actual threat. He also had some words for Izalis. He called him a poor excuse for a leader and that he's run this alliance into the ground trying to please everyone. That he isn't a leader, he's just a follower. And he's going to lead Starcats into the ground. Now he did leave a lengthy goodbye letter uh, to Starcats before he left. He said uh, he didn't really have a dry eye while he was writing it. And it is very long, so I'm not actually going to, to put it uh, up here and, and read it. It's it's a very, very long letter. But I will put a link in the description below with the images of his goodbye letter. He did also want it known that he has been painted of trying to take officers with him when he left. And that Sancho himself shut that crap down immediately uh, going that, And then he was booted from the Starcats Discord. Now, as a small follow-up, since he... He did send me a message showing that the uh, donations and funding have never been lower. Currently, the morale has never been lower. Defense is now gone. Uh, the PvP team is gone as well. The wallet is basically zeroed. Uh, ratting is almost never happens in groups anymore. Mining also rarely happens in groups. Um, and also that their structures are all being timed and downed regularly around the area. They have no pipe patrols or defensive organization whatsoever. Now, because this is a uh, cropped uh, conversation screenshot, I don't know who's talking here. I don't know if this is a members within Starcats or if this is Sancha himself talking. But I'm just going to put it up here 
and you can make your own opinion. Either way, we'll keep an eye to the north to see exactly how Starcat's uh, fares after this brief uh, split in leadership. Now, one of the things that has happened since the fall of Pantheon is that uh, the Corporation and Alliance Sky News, who I always put at the end of every video, because they are a great uh, team over there of just not only pilots, but also uh, unbiased reporters who give uh, the Russian aspect of news that's going on. They're led by uh, Let's Play the Game, a official content creator for the, uh, for the game itself. Now, just before Pantheon fell, uh, we had that split from uh, Happy Bees. The, the, some of the goons left and formed their own corporation and now have their own alliance as well. That was uh, STJ, that was Topsy, and that crew right there. Now, Sky News uh, tells me that they did see the screenshots of them breaking off and that they were, you know, separating after war and they were still blue to them because they, they had their corporation on, on a blue basis. He says, a week later, however, and this is around the 28th, uh, that the FECK Corporation came into the system ZTAC N9IP, which is a dead end with an N, uh, NPS, uh, NPC station. And um, they just kind of moved in there, and they were blue with them while they were in the Honey Badger Alliance. And during this time, they started amassing and, and bringing in 15 to 20 pilots, and then within a week, they had built a fleet, and then joined the Flying Circus Alliance, and then started attacking Sky News. Let's Play goes on says that they had no experience and no warships, and they were frightened by the camps and other aggressive actions being taken, um, but they had to, they decided to defend the news solve. He says that since the aggressive actions were being taken, they were reached out uh, around the 11th, sorry, around the, the 10th, saying the reply from Flying Circus was, we have nothing against you or news, and no interest in destroying your ships or assets, but we would like to live in impasse and in the constellation that they are in particular. So let's play answered back saying, first of all, please accept my respect. You guys make great moves. And I just have little uh, experience in such things and I like what you do. Me and my alliance also have nothing against you. We would like to play the game that you provided us and we would want to try it. This will teach us a lot. In other words, that's Sky News taking the, the bull by the horns and saying, you know what? We're going to defend this space. We're not just going to be sit. We're just going to sit idle by and be blue to everyone. We're going to see take this action that's being given to us, and we're going to see if we can repel. So during that time, there were uh, timers, armor timers that were set against Sky News. So they assembled seventy pilots to defend those armor timers. He says that there were about fifty opponents, and that they wouldn't leave the dock. So those timers were actually saved and defended by Sky News. Now this is a group that has little to no experience in PvP. These are mostly, you know, your ratters and and miners, just people just enjoying the game in itself without the PvP aspect. Let's Play said he did a few briefings before the actions to teach his guys how to move in the fleet, and that he doesn't have enough skills either, but. They talked about it, and they, they just had an idea about it to go forth. He's saying, as the night went on, near the end, uh, when their main Citadel system uh, timer was coming up, there was only about 20 of them left, uh, and they waited until they brought a fleet and gave them a fight. They say that there was about 21 of Sky News against 27 of the Flying Circus. He says the Flying Circus, their lineup was heavy, it was higher quality, in other words, bigger ships, more tech advanced ships. Uh, and they held on for 50 minutes, saying they first they fought behind the Citadel and then near the Citadel, killing several ships and about 100 drones. But then they, they lost and the Citadel did fall to structure. Not bad for a group of Carabares, right? But they also went on the offensive as well, saying that they took Flying Circus's structure in ZTAC and O uh, down to structure as well, and that they they brought out more of their expensive ships for that op. They also state that Flying Circus did bring in another corporation, Walk, W-A-L-K, that had seceded from the Genesis Federation. He does go on saying that they are enjoying the content though. Um, they are taking a loss, but they're learning a lot in the process. Uh, they said they've been attacked often by pirates, and these skills will help them in the future. This is the first time they've ever had this kind of thing, so war on their doorstep. And this is the first serious confrontation that they've actually had. 
but while this is going on, uh, he does want to let his <clears throat> let everyone know that he can't make news or content because the budget to do so is going towards defense. So I did reach out to Topsy for the Flying Circus to see their side of things. And I got a, an official statement saying that when we decided to move to Impasse, it was to get a place where we could be gray to nearly everybody, if not all, of the server. Engage in varied PvP scales and collectively be unworried if our sob was lost in the process of not escalating conflicts via increased blue standings. Now that we're here, we are following through with that. This includes staying gray to news. So far, the PvP has been super fun. While news is certainly not a large block, it would be a disservice to the community that they've built to underestimate uh, their size and wealth. This is an alliance with five T9 to T10 SOV systems. Their rally points are filled with faction battleships and tech level 10 strikers. They regularly field 25 plus for gate camps. For their first Citadel armor timer, they had 75 people at the height with a 50 man logout trap. We're excited to continue PvPing in both our new home region and elsewhere. So it's good to see that there is healthy PvP everywhere and it's not just you know large entities fighting itself now we will be keeping an eye on exactly what's going on between the flying circus and news and uh we'll keep you apprised of that now as these capitals have first come out we have actually seen them die in a quick fashion as well since release there have been numerous capitals that have fallen uh since that patch we had two weeks ago now the first capital lost felt across the server the first one downed was owned by a catch-22 pilot deathstalker so being the record setter i did have to reach out to him and, and see exactly what happened because there is a video out and it shows uh, as if he was going without a uh, escort and he was held uh right before a gate and killed by several battleships so i reached out to him and asked so i hear you were the unfortunate one to be the first cap pilot to lose his ship on the server he answers back Yes, one of three capital ships, but I got it back already. Now, now this man not only has one, but he has three capitals. You know, if he wants to slide one of them my way, I wouldn't argue anything. You know, I wouldn't mind flying a capital myself, but let's progress. So I asked him, you have three capitals. He says, yes, I have two caps I have built so far. The third has a few more days to finish being built. Now, this interview was done on the 13th. Uh, the event started after the second home defense for a armor timer. We had come back and found a few interceptors growing behind the fleet, and I came to help the allies who were being hit. I took out an interceptor with uh, one shot, hold a second one, and then cloaked Dictor came out and popped the bubble, and I immediately killed him. But then I heard of the battleships that were heading my way. I tried to move and called out to some allies, but they were out of position to assist. So that is brave, actually bringing a capital to a defense fleet. He goes on to say that the enemy fleet was about 20 ships in total and had about two logisticals, uh, which kept him from destroying the battleships. The Waji uh, were half the way to hull. They had to run each time I targeted him since I would drop their shields instantly. I was laughing the whole fight since the entire fleet could only get around 200 damage per hit by then. They were 14 newts and 28 points on me. The issue was, without the shield booster running, I was stable with capacitor. They could not out -newt me. But when I healed, it dropped the uh, capacitor down fast. Plus, I lost a third of my DPS due to a glitch with the fighters. I had to switch from the air superiority fighters to the light attack fighters, and it refused to acknowledge my fighters in my hangars. This left me with only two fighter groups. Air superiority fighters are more for frigates, not battleships, and were giving me around uh, only 1,000 damage per hit, while my light attack were hitting between 3,000 to 4,000 uh, EHP per hit. If I had the light attack fighters, I would have I would have destroyed the Lodgy faster, and then warded down the battleship and killed a few. The oh crap moment was definitely when my fighters were locked out and I could not switch them. I basically got worn down over 15 to 20 minutes uh, of the battle. If I could have won, but I, I say it was fun fight, even though I lost it, but the insurance is a killer, but laughed it off. 
My philosophy, you have a chance to die anytime you leave your station, so make it count and enjoy the game. I have spares being made or planned, and I bet you I personally own the most capital ships in Eve Echoes. My two alts built them uh, DS Scrapper and Little DS Killer are mine. I can get built just about everything and have components ready for five more Dreadnoughts, which I will be building for my coalition or select few others who ask nicely. Being the first to die in a cap is like breaking a cherry. Once you do it, it breaks the stress and I was able to use the data from that fight to have a clearer idea of fitting for the ships I fly. I will most likely lose another, but I will never shy from a fight and I will cause more damage next time. I, have, I hope to explain my view uh, was fun fighting, we'll do it again. This time with a properly fit ship. But one word of warning for carrier pilots is to watch out for the fighters when they show up unstacked in your hangars. It would normally cause the lockdown on fighters. I hope this helps you all. Now, the day or two after I talked to him about that, there were two more caps that fell. Both belonged to him as well. So I reached out and said, did you just lose another two? And his answer was just brilliant. He goes, yep. But tanked twice as hard, great stress test, but just caught into a hog off trap. Now I did ask if he was able to get any kills before he went down. He says, not sure. They did anti-tracking pretty hard and ran away each time I hit armor. But with 40 fighting at once, never checked. I put the game down. It was a good fight and I have plans for uh, fun for those that track me in the future. So I will be a lot of cat and mouse to get these kills next time. But I feel it will be entertaining if they want to try and hit me. They should focus on my movements. Again, this is a great attitude to have for any PvP pilot, especially one that has just lost this much in capital ships. I do applaud you. Now, those weren't the only capitals to go down this week. I have been told now I weren't, wasn't involved in any of these fights, but I'm told that Genesis did take down two carriers this week. One belonging to uh, Wicked Rift of Pew, uh, P-E-W, which is within No. The other belonging to um, uh, Corporation H-A-R. I'm not sure who they belong to. I'm not sure if that's no or, or no. Uh, if someone wants to put down in the comments who they, they do belong to. But, like I said, the two carriers they got this week. One was the other night on the 19th. And this Chimera was $37 billion. And the other one was Rick, uh, Wicked Rifts. I'll have the videos playing in the background on these kills and I, I'll also add links to the full videos. The second one was a Nidhogger valued at 28.9 billion. So salutes going out to all you who have lost capitals over this, this last week and uh, hopefully uh, you recover from that loss. Okay so there is no um, Corporate Wine Spotlight this week. The slot is open. Uh, please feel free to DM me to get the details on how to get that recognition out to your Corp or Wines. Uh, but I am going to focus in on from the death of Pantheon, a new alliance has emerged called Myth. The Valhalla Alliance. Now, this is obviously a new alliance that popped up from the death of Pantheon within Fountain. Um, but they claim to have more of the dangerous corpse in Fountain within them. That uh, the corporations currently are uh, covert ops at CVRT, the Necromonger Empire, NCRO, the uh, Federico Lusa Bra, that's F L B R, um, and you have the Rocks and Droids R2 D2. Now, the reason I bring that up is because they did go on a tear this week within Fountain. They have killed. Two Corporation Citadels and three Corporation Outposts, clearing the path for their, I would say, reign in that region. Doing a total damage of around 38,000, uh, sorry, 38 uh, billion in total ISK damages. Congratulations to them, and we will keep an eye on to see what myth brings us in the future broadcasts. Just a reminder that the big kills from now on is 5 billion plus on those kills. 
and bots will start us off with a 6.9 billion rattlesnake kill and a 13 billion vindicator kill. Six seal alliance gives us four vindicators, uh, 6.3, 8.2, 7.5 and 5.4 as well as two rattlesnake kills one at 6.2 the other at 7 uh, one Macario kill at 5 billion a 7.1 billion Orthrus kill a 5.7 billion Stratios kill and three Balgorn kills at 6 billion 6.3 and 6.4 the no police stop alliance gives us a 8.4 billion Balgorn kill, a 5.4 billion Rattlesnake kill, and a 7.4 billion Macario kill. Catch-22 gives us a 5.1 billion Rattlesnake kill. Genesis comes in with a 7.2 billion Vindicator kill, a 5.7 billion Balgorn kill, two Rattlesnakes, one at 5.2 billion, the other at 8.9. Trimark comes in with a 5.7 billion Nightmare Kill, a 5.7 billion Vindicator Kill, and a 5.4 billion Apoch Striker. Myth Alliance comes in with a 6.4 billion Macario Kill. Void comes in with a uh, Twin Balgorns, one at 6.5, the other at 6, a 6.2 billion Coveter 2 Kill, and Twin Macarios one at 5.6, the other at 5.4. The Nomadic Nightmares comes in with a 6 billion Prophecy kill. Uh, Thor Corporation with 8 billion Macaro kill. And OMGX with a 14.4 Chiron Freighter kill. And the, oh, I'm calling the kill of the week. Uh, T comes in with a 12.6 billion Raven Striker kill. Look at all those B-types. Now before we get into everyone's favorite, the solo kills of the week, and a chance at winning a free Omega uh, combo, we just have this honorable mention of uh, what I'm told is the first uh, death by a capital. And that is held by Percy Jackson, killed by his fellow corp mate in his... Uh, in his Naglfar. Percy Jackson was 5.9. Now, he was submitting this for the contest, but since it was a setup duel, I is eligible for the contest. But let's get into the contest proper. And starting us off, we have Sarge Savage with a 4 billion coveter 2 kill. Giselle 39 Nye with a 4.142 billion uh, rattlesnake kill. We have Lanos with a 4.188 billion Badger kill. Cosmic Hawk gives us a 4.2 billion Narius 2 kill. 100072754474 gives us a 4.4 billion Coveter 2 kill. Zero 02 comes in with a 4.6 billion Coveter 2 kill. Yeegs with a 4.7 billion Coveter 2 kill. Alvachi with a 5.5 billion Balgorn kill. T14 with a 5.6 billion Badger 2 kill. And the winner this week of a free Omega combo is N30 Dream with a 5.7 billion Coveter 2 kill. Please contact me via Discord so I can get that prize out to you. And congratulations on winning. Now, that's our show this week, and I do hope to have more episodes out in a timely manner. I look out for a new episode of, um, it's just an episode of going over that event, the Neon Rain uh, event, coming out on this Tuesday, the 23rd. And uh, that's our show. Now, if you need more news in your life, I suggest you go on over and check out the Sky News channel, where they also have a premiere news site. Great production team over there. I know the news is a little bit wacky because they are facing the, those battles with the Flying Circus, but they do put on a great show there. It is um, the premier Russian news outlet. However, every episode they upload, they will also add English subtitles. And, as always, check out Rambo's Echoes of New Eden podcast with roundtable discussions every week, as well as an interview with an influential member of the community. Now, 
I want you all to have a great week, a great weekend. Fly safe. And remember, we are always one vision, one purpose, one front.